job and nothing to hide and showcasing what someone who maybe believes that actually believes when you you get the chance to show them what data can be collected in um, honestly fairly straightforward ways. Even if you collected mostly like phone location data, um, browsing history, things like that, and you're able to construct a, a very clear picture of um, Mr. X and of the, the things that he did, the people who he talked to, the people who he engaged with, where he went, all of those things from from that data. And obviously that was a very, um, a, I think a chilling look at what data collection can do to, to really expose who we are as people to big tech, to governments, to nation states. Um, so what is it, what made you want to follow it up with Disappear and what's kind of the, the thing that you want the audience to get out of Disappear when they're watching that? Yeah. Well, yeah, Nothing to Hide was really uh, at a time, <clears throat> actually, when I heard about the Snowden uh, revelations, I, I wasn't, I was really like uh, non-savvy in terms of computer, uh, online security and so on. And I, I just remember, I felt like, okay, this is really not good just from a geopolitic uh, point of view. But then I felt, yeah, um, I don't know much about these, these issues. It was not really, uh, as a journalist, I was correspondent in Germany for French newspapers. And 2013 and then 14 were very, uh, there was a lot going on. There was... Uh, well, Ukraine already uh, at that time. Mm -hmm. um, there was then, uh, there was, uh, yeah, in Palestinian, there was uh, this, uh, I don't know how you call it in, in, in English, Pondurcis, this operation. Then there was uh, the beginning of Daesh. So I, I actually quickly moved to uh, other topics. And then, um, and then in, in Berlin, I got like familiar to this topic because in Berlin, we started to get a lot of uh, what uh, we call the digital exiles. So I, actually a lot of people from like WikiLeaks, um, but not only like uh, Laura Poitras, for example, the filmmaker of uh, Citizen Four came to Berlin. Um, there was there was like Berlin is known also Germans are very into into privacy because of their past and history. And I started like getting along with 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 this kind of people. And uh, and then I w and and I got really interested in, in in like this privacy topic. I've always been quite private, like instant instantly. I always had uh, pseudonyms. Even my all my first emails and so on. I always I don't know why, but I um, but I, I I didn't know how it worked. I didn't know networks. I didn't know uh, all that stuff. And then I started going to. I was invited to a crypto party in the C base. That was really like it's the oldest uh, hacker space actually in the world. I thought it was Europe, but it's actually in the world. Wow. And uh, in Berlin, it's like an institution. And I really like fell into it. I, I came back with a, a encryption key, a email encryption key, PGP key, uh, without having understood necessarily everything. But um, yeah, and then I started to talk around me uh, with my friends, with my colleagues. Uh, and I felt like, yeah, it, for a lot of people, it was not really a, a topic. And, and I, I always heard this, you know, this expression, uh, this narrative, I have nothing to hide. And especially with some friends, and Mr. Rix is is one of my friends. He was former uh, one of my flatmates, and 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 he's an actor. So I, I told him, okay, uh, you are. I, I asked him, can I follow you for? Can I follow your data, gather your data, and analyze your data for one month? And he said, okay, yeah, do it. And so we installed um, a spyware on his uh, smartphone and I had some uh, hacker friends uh, monitoring his uh, computer too. He signed papers, we, we did that like really like legally mm -hmm. backed up. And yeah, and of course uh, for him, it was like a, a big shock in, in nothing to hide because he, he understood like what, especially what metadata means you know everyone thinks 
privacy is about you know what you send to your lovers and and people think no one cares about what i say to my friends and and even if even that is not true like the the most the richest material is metadata and that's where he saw for example if you check where you sleep where you are at 4 a.m then you start to see like patterns of your life and then in the end the two uh, analysts who did the um, the job uh and didn't know him actually got a lot of of uh, of him and even we didn't show everything in the film especially uh well he he's actually okay to, to but for example he was going out a lot and sometimes we say it but we don't really stop on this fact but he stayed uh dancing for like uh, 48 hours like non-stop and then well obviously you can't do that <laughs> and and that's uh, uh, a data that you know an uh, insurance company would be very interested in you know especially mm -hmm. if it if it goes on um if it goes on and on and he was yeah he was spinning with his cars he was sleeping at weird places yeah there was actually a lot you could tell about uh, and the the analysis of his data were made by two analysts like professional analysts but it was really um it was a hand job you know it was they spent a couple of days on it but you have machines doing it like much much better and you know on an industrial way and even they said with what we did already now we could we could like start to to make to apply this analysis to like bigger crowds and then get you know learn from the results and and, and so on so yeah i think nothing to hide is um is is a is a dangerous narrative and it kind of of feel right you know if if i don't do anything wrong then i don't have nothing to hide it feels valid you know um legit but uh of course then there is you know what you can make the data say also about you you know and then you have the whole problem with the uh, uh like political activists um you know you have um and just allowing that a society uh can go on can go after like certain peoples like uh you'll see in, in um in disappear uh, there is uh, f there are five protagonists and one is uh, one is actually uh, well it's it's about uh, source protection for journalists and we follow the mm -hmm. surveillance of Julian Assange and WikiLeaks and that's also typically allowing that you know this kind of of things happen and um, and yeah and and it leads to what we learned yesterday that you know UK is going to extradite him after being like surveilled uh, very um, very harshly for for seven years in the in the embassy uh, in London, so yeah and yeah and so so nothing to hide with it. It was under Creative Commons, uh, so there was a lot of I think there was like four hundred screenings. Awesome. And, and uh, and the people like at the beginning were just doing screenings and then more and more we were trying to like you know do like install party or crypto parties after like do the screening earlier in the day and because the it always came down uh, after the screenings to you know like what we can do what can i do you know even if, if i don't have much to hide and disappear was a, a, a difficult, a very difficult documentary for one reason is um, there is no, so we wanted to uh, answer that question, but there is no one size fits all uh, answer. Yeah. And even, yeah. you know, you could some 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 tips, some answers would be valid for someone, and dangerous for other people. So it was. So you have to go into what we call threat models and um so that's what we did we tried to you know like find like different kind of profiles and then fi finding the stories accordingly um 
that that was the hard part of uh, disappear was finding the stories and make it uh, understandable that for for everyone you know like for a teenager or for uh well max uh thomas is still in uh in disappear he tries to get away from the gafam after what he discovered and so that's his uh and he started i i, I won't spoil it but it's actually interesting because he started something that has to do with the fediverse with which is a uh, a network of uh, decentralized free software social media with the most uh, popular and well known is Mastodon. But you wow. have, yeah, and but then you have, yeah, and then so he goes into this, and the project he started with other people is now alive, and there was even. Uh, a hackathon last week there's going to be a, a new one in september and there is like interest uh, a lot of interest behind behind the the project so i i, I don't want to spoil but um it's it's also nice to see we, we talk a lot about free software and that's something very interesting in the free software uh community is like anyone can start a project because the technology is available and you have a lot of people who are just willing to, you know, build uh, another internet or, you know, at least alternative projects. And, um, and that's what happened in the, uh, with Max, who has not a lot of clue uh, of uh, technology, but is from just civil society. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's been one of the great things of uh, starting to see people realize the need for personal privacy and, and realize that that idea of like nothing to hide or that I don't have anything to hide falls apart quickly when you realize that who you are as a person, the ability to have intimacy with other human beings, the ability to have relationships with other human beings really relies on you having privacy. If you have nothing to share with someone in a unique way, a lot of what we come to know as being a human falls apart quickly. So even if you're not someone who's targeted by a nation state or a, a journalist or a, a political activist, there is still much to lose by not caring about personal privacy. Um, but I love to hear those stories where people, they wake up to that that need for themselves, but they also take those steps to help others. So I'm really excited to see what what project he kickstarted out of that um, and excited to, to jump in to disappear right after this. Uh, and I, I, I love that you tagged the importance of free and open source software. So obviously that, that fits in well with Monero and what we're trying to do here, which is um, at least hopefully fix the, the financial surveillance aspect of that. Obviously it doesn't fix all of the problems that we face in, in the current digital paradigm, um, but hopefully it can fix for those people who decide to use it, it can fix that financial surveillance angle. Um, and that only is possible because of the free and open source movement, the ability to just create this, to build on the work of others um, and to, to share it freely. So excited for that pairing. And I think this would be a great audience to, to walk through disappear. And I am, I, as someone who does privacy education, it's very hard to do that in a way that's approachable to everyone. Since like you mentioned, we all have very different things that we want to keep hidden. We all have very different things that make us who we are. So giving one catch all answer is, is just impossible. Um, so I'm, I'm very keen to also see your approach there and, and learn from it. But um, thank you so much for, for jumping on Mark. Any last comments you want to leave with the crowd before we, we kick off disappear? Sorry, again? I said, any last comments you want to leave with the crowd before we kick off Disappear? Um, well, maybe, in, um, yeah, maybe you'll see. So there is one part on, on Julian Assange, and as I said, now Julian Assange is about to be extradited to the US. And there has been a, a lot that has been said about uh, Julian Assange and WikiLeaks and, you know, what, what they did or what they what they did not do and you know it, he became like very um uh, marginalized and there starts to be support uh, around him again but uh, as my uh, for a personal opinion uh, i think it's going to be devastating if he's extradited to the united states for press freedom but not only for press freedom for all our freedoms and i think a lot of people um there was also like smear campaigns, you know, like the, I was just talking with other journalists about um, 
you know, the role played by some of the institutional medias like The Guardian and, and everything. So a lot of people got a, a, I, a, for me, a wrong sense of, of what was going on. There are things that went wrong and there are things WikiLeaks can be held ac accountable uh, for. But I think uh, uh, that's at least what I try to do right now. And um, I'm in a collective of uh, journalists trying to speak up for Assange. And I think, uh, yeah, all of us, uh, no matter what you can, you might think of the his personality or something uh, that we all should, you know, it's, I think it's a really historical uh, pe period in terms of, of uh, freedoms. And as I said, not only press freedom, even if press freedom is going to be very weakened if he gets extradited, because it means like any journalist can be extradited to a third party state for uh, no reason, uh, having, you know, not live there, not work there. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, currently, I'm also working on it on a, on a documentary at the moment about this. And um, yeah, I think, um, I think we should all like, you know, just talk about it, uh, maybe write to uh, our MPs or just get involved and just not let that happen because it's, uh, yeah, I think it's a very dangerous precedent for uh, for all of us, no matter what you can think of the person. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a very a very timely topic to be be covering and disappear, and hopefully it'll get people thinking and, and taking action to do what we can to keep those those freedoms. If journalistic freedom falls apart, most others will quickly as well. Uh, we've seen that in other parts of the world, so. Um, hopefully we have some sway, at least in our, our current governmental systems. Um, but yeah, a, a crazy time, but a timely one. So hopefully it'll spark good discussion after the film and um, maybe some good some good action for people. So thank you for jumping on, Mark. It was great to be able sure. to chat with you face to face and, and just walk through a little bit of both nothing to hide and then get an intro and disappear. So very excited to, to tune in and, and thankful that all the people here get to um, enjoy your work, learn from it, and then hopefully take some practical steps towards personal privacy as a result. Okay, sure. Thank you for having me and uh, have a nice screening. Thanks, Mark. Have a good day. Okay, bye-bye.